Hello, hello, we are back after a break. Um, so now, right now, it's, it's time to start the main part of this evening. So the panel discussion about uh, named what, life after uni. So what to do, what kind of possibilities, what kind of um, chances do we have as a physics students after graduation, after, after finishing our universities. And um, I know this is a, today is the 1st of April. So uh, this is a April's Fool's Day, but I'm not joking. We'll try together today, figure it out, uh, what uh, kind of careers do we have in physics? And it will be, I hope it will be a big discussion, even a big crew, I hope, about, uh, about, about, uh, about all areas in physics. And uh, I won't be querying. I just, I just will try to moderate discussion with our six great, great, great guests uh, who, who came, who came, uh, who, who came here together uh, and uh, they will try to answer all your questions. Uh, I would like to introduce our guests. Uh, first of all, ladies first, uh, with us to this evening is Miss Anna Kaminska from Cryotech Instru Instruments. Hello, Miss Anna. Do, we, do you hear us properly? Um. Everything's fine? Uh, yes, I, I believe I can hear you and hopefully you can hear me as well. Perfect. Uh, the next of my list, the next guest of this e e evening is Mr. Łukasz Cincio from Los Alamos Laboratories. Hello, Mr. Łukasz. Yep. Hi, thanks for having me here. And Mr. Michał Tomza from University of Warsaw. Hello. Hello. And uh, the next, the next guest of this evening is Mr. Jakub Schlenzak from Wrocław Uni University of Science and Technology. Hello, and nice to meet you all. And the, uh, and the next guest is Mr. Dariusz Świerat from Fluence, uh, Fluence Technology. Good afternoon. Thank Good. you for having me here. Good afternoon, Mr. Mr. Darius. And the last but not least is Marcin Polkowski from End to End to Analytics. Hello, Mr. Marcin. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Thank you for uh, thank you very much that you uh, accept our um, our invitation for this panel. And today, as I said, we'll try to figure it out uh what kind of careers what kind of possibilities do we have as a physics students in uh, in 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 20, 21st century um but let's start from the hmm, zeros question please tell me more about yourself i would like to ask you about your field of interest in physics about your universities uh, or or companies that you are working there uh, maybe let's start with uh, Miss Anna Kamiska. Mm. Hi, yes. Yeah. So uh, first of all, hello everyone, and nice. It's very nice to be here. Um, I I have studied physics at the University of Warsaw um, and worked as a researcher in high energy physics uh, for uh, several years. Uh, and then I moved to industry and I'm now working at a Polish um, SME Krautech Instruments. Um, and yes, I'm definitely still using my experience in physics, uh, but uh, uh, I have learned many other things. Uh, and um, there are many, many differences between uh, work in research and uh, work in industry. So I don't know if that answers your question. <laughs> yeah, it's completely answered my question. So we have first physicists from the uh, from, from from the big company from the uh, from the business side, and the next uh, one is Mr. Lukas Cincio from uh, who is with, uh, who is right now, I guess, in in USA. That's correct. Yeah. Um, so I got my PhD in theoretical physics from Jagiellonian University, Krakow. Then I moved to um, Canada, uh, Perimeter Institute for Theoretical Physics. I was a postdoc there. 
Then I moved to Los Alamos. Um, I joined as an Oppenheimer fellow, uh, and then I was, and then I became a staff scientist uh, at Los Alamos. So I work on um, quantum computation and quantum many-body physics. Uh, you know, we, we can discuss more about that. Yeah, uh, for sure, we're uh, gonna discuss more. But, um, but my path is, yeah, yeah, just maybe, mm -hmm. you know, um, just to finish. So, you know, my path is, um, so I, so I'm a scientist. So, you know, I do science. Um, it's not exactly academic environment. So it's a national lab. And then, you know, I can address the differences if you're interested uh, later. But, but, you know, it's mostly, it's mostly science and grant proposal writing as many of my friends doing now yeah okay uh, the grant it. proposal writing uh, is in, in in industry as well so don't right, worry. yeah i think it's just universal so you know whatever you do you know you will at some point have to apply for money yeah, <laughs> yeah. okay I, i'm really happy that we are uh, that we are starting the discussion but let me uh, let in, let me introduce the the next uh, guest mr michal tomza who I would like to ask you the same questions about your field paths Yes, so I'm a university professor at the Faculty of Physics at the University of Warsaw. Uh, I work on theoretical physics, so I have quantum theoretical physics of ultra-cold systems, so I'm much interested in very, very cold systems. So mostly it's fundamental research. I mean, there is some overlap with Lukasz, I think, because, of course, I mean, this is kind of broad area of, of, of quantum physics or quantum technology, so I'm not, I'm, I'm really interested in fundamental physics, but But of course, the, the kind of applied stuff is also around, or sometimes it's even justification for our grants. But uh, yeah, I, I did I did my 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 undergrads and PhD in Warsaw. It was kind of uh, during my PhD was partially also in Germany, uh, and then my postdoc was uh, in Spain in Barcelona at Institute of Photonic Sciences, which is kind of good example also how to combine fundamental research with some some technological applications later. Uh, uh, was it with uh, with Maciej Levenstein, maybe? Yes, yes, yes. It was with Maciej Levenstein. All right, nice. Yes, and at the yeah. moment I and at the moment I lead also the large group, so we are like 15, 15 people. So it's like uh, four postdocs, six PhD students, and and other group members. So this is quite not usual, I would say, as for Polish standards, for at least for some time. So this was our uh, Warsaw uh, representative, and right now it's time from Ros for Wroclaw, uh, Mr. Jakub. Uh, hello, I studied uh, physics, but also applied mathematics uh, in Poland, also in Wroclaw. But uh, then I spent some time in Germany at Potsdam University, at Hamburg University, and I moved for some time to Israel to Bar Ilan University. Uh, now I'm back again in Poland, but I still cooperate with Germany. And uh, my area of expertise is I uh, work uh, in a branch of physics. It's that sometimes really hard to distinguish when applied mathematics and and physics starts. Uh, it's generally it's non-equilibrium statistical physics, uh, biophysics, uh, stochastic dynamics, and statistics. And right now, uh, Mr. Darius Świerat. Hi. Uh, so thank you again for having me here. So I graduated from uh, Nikolaus Copernicus University uh, first, where I studied theoret theoretical physics. Um, but I also uh, spent some time in the lab working on uh, ultra -cold, cold atoms and optical clocks. Later, I moved to Birmingham, University of Birmingham, where I joined the Ultra Cold Atoms Group and uh, did my PhD on ultra stable lasers for clock, uh, atomic clocks, optical cl atomic clocks. Um, then I moved to the industry. So uh, I was a sales engineer selling uh, lasers. Um, next, I work sometime for Teletine E2V, being a science lead and uh, developing atomic clocks, but based on cesium. And to finally move back to Poland and join Fluence. So uh, Fluence is a laser manufacturer, and I'm here to 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 develop uh, 
the market and develop business for for our company. Thank you very much. It's, Rex, it's really nice to, to having you uh, with us. And uh, Mr. Marcin Polkowski. Uh, hi, everyone. So I studied uh, at the University of Warsaw. I have a PhD in physics, uh, uh, in actually in geophysics. And after finishing my PhD, I stayed at the, at the faculty for, for a year. Uh, then I switched uh, and I worked at the Institute of uh, Meteorology and Water Management in Warsaw. And this is when I decided to change my career path and go uh, somewhere else than just uh, science. And I ended up doing uh, working for a consulting company in the Bay Area in, the Cal in California uh, that uh, uh, was later acquired by a huge international consulting company with like over almost 700,000 people across the globe. Uh, I am physically in, in, in Warsaw, uh, but uh, my, all of my work is in California and I am planning on being also physically in California, moving to California uh, soon with, uh, with my family. Thank you very much. And as we see, uh, somebody is also with you. <laughs> Uh, yes, so there, there are three of my daughters uh, hello, uh, hello. around it's, here today. It's nice to having you all uh, with us. Um, okay, so as we see, we have a, a big variety of uh, other fields in uh, different fields uh, that we can, um, that where we can do physics. And um, next question for me, it will be uh, just a uh, Quick round of uh, quick round of question means uh, in which part of physics as a science uh, can you see yourselves? Like a pure science, maybe uh, much more in business, or maybe between. Just just a, a I just need a simple answer, Miss Anna, please. So it's always most difficult to, to be the first one to answer the question, but let me try. Um, okay, so I started as a, uh, as a let's say, pure scientist uh, and in a very theoretical field, so in, in the theoretical high energy physics. Um, and then, well, when moving to industry, I basically jumped into something totally different. Uh, and for quite a long time, I had to catch up with all the business uh, related uh, aspects. Uh, but fortunately, the company that I work for um, has very strong ties with, uh, with uh, the field of research. So um, even more general than academia, because obviously we have tight, tight collaborations with academia. Uh, like with uh, CERN, for example, and th this was the first connection that I had from my old life, let's say, to the new one. Um, but um, we have uh, close relations with, uh, uh, with uh, the research that is going on right now in quantum technologies, and this is a field which is dynamically evolving and growing and uh, being developed not only in, in academic institutes, but also in in industry, which is very good, I think. Um, so this element of, uh, let's say, research or science has always been there. But first, uh, since I had to catch up with all the other things uh, that I had to learn, it was maybe not very dominant. Uh, but uh, now, uh, after uh, several years, uh, I'm I kind of start to feel this this balance. So we have many uh, so-called R&D projects, so research and development projects, and I'm also a project manager. Um, and I take part in, in these uh, activities at the company. Uh, so it, sometimes I feel, again, a bit like a scientist, uh, but it's, it's totally different, obviously, than before. So I'd say um, business, but with a, with a touch of, uh, of science to it. So I see it's not such a simple question. Uh, no. <laughs> Mr. Darius, uh, science, business, between, I think, business. I have to say business, but for me, it was a long route to actually end up where I'm now. So uh, just after university, I... I just after 
high school, I believed, you know, I, I, I want to do theoretical physics. So it is so far away from, my, from what I'm doing right now. But the great thing is that, uh, well, the university I went to and the people I met were uh, kind enough to, to for me and, and support me in my decisions. So, uh, you know, I, I started as a theorist then uh, I, I moved through uh, actually hands-on experience in the lab, developing some um, applied physics systems and uh, to end up as like commercial person uh, with business um, oriented uh, tasks. So uh, yes, so I have to say uh, business is where I'm now, but uh, like also uh, well, um, I have I have also to say that well, our business is very close to science. It's very much linked to science because we base on um, something that took very long time to develop, and uh, our customers are from scientific world as well. So th there is a bridge between still scientific world and the business side and technological side of our products. I see. Thank you. Thank you for your answer. Mr. Wukash, what you, what you can say about it? Yeah. So, so for me, it's pure science and it's always been like that. Um, so as a postdoc, you know, you just need to concentrate 100% on, on science that, you know, you need to keep, you know, bring out papers to get another offer to stay in, in, in academia. So this is how it works. So, um, yeah, it was always science, theoretical physics, um, maybe now more applied, but only a little bit. Um, yeah, I still have many equations in my paper. So, you know. so, <laughs> I see. Yeah. Um, so maybe now a little bit more management, you know, uh, as you have, as you are involved in larger group and then you're kind of moving upwards, then, you know, you have some, some management to do as well. But um, I would say, you know, 90, 95% of my time is just uh, working on some equations. You know, this is what I do. And is it yeah. this? Mm -hmm. And is it the Not same right. from for Mr. Michał Tomza? Yes, that's the one. Uh, yes, <laughs> definitely. Uh, I would call that I'm doing fundamental research, fundamental physics, with, of course, hopefully some 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 applications somewhere in the future. But this is not the most important for us at the moment. Although now, I mean, this this was a good example. Unfortunately, there is also lots of management and things related to to leading large group with with lots of grants. But but definitely, I prefer the part of doing fundamental research and and teaching my my students or like um, yeah. And how about uh, Mr. Mr. Martin? I think because of the logotype behind you, it's it will be a, a, a pure business. Uh, it is pure business. So uh, you know, it's definitely important to uh, to have this physical background to be able to apply this stuff that we learn across the years doing physics in business. But uh, for me, it's business. And you know, when you're growing in the business with your career, it's definitely going into management. I see. And how about Mr. Jakub? Um, I concentrate on science personally, but um, I have a business all around me, so to say. And so the, actually, it's not even one kind of business uh, because of my specific speciality. I'm like a few different branches of business. One of my uh, co-operators is actually working in medicine. Uh, also, uh, so my methods are related to that. Uh, actually, other has a deep connection to science, to banking, especially, and to financial consulting. Another person I cooperate it is actually working in mining using our methods, uh, the Kagehaim company, even on the lower side, Silesia. I see. Uh, for for those who are watching us on YouTube, remember that there is a, a window with the live chat, so we can always ask your questions if something is uh, is something is more interesting for you. I will try to ask them our our guests. So um, sticking to our discussion, I see fortunately that you have a draw. 
So it's uh, free, free to free, free for physicists uh, doing a pure science, and I think free uh, for business. And um, do, how do you think about it? Like, do you think is that typical, let's say, distribution in this field, in the field of physics? Uh, Mr. Jakub, what do you think about it? Uh, could you rephrase that question once again? Uh, I mean, I mean, I mean that uh, right now we have uh, free people doing, uh, let's say, pure science and free, uh, free, uh, more, which are more focused in business. And uh, and is it? Do you think is it a tip, let's say, typical state, typical distribution? Like it's a normal thing. For in, in well, okay, physics. I think the question is quite vague in the sense that uh, who considers themselves as a physicist? <laughs> yes. Of course, yeah. Usually when people Let's go to it. business, I think they just start, start to call themselves differently. However, obviously, most of the people who finish physics, yes, uh, they don't go to university, they go to business. I would say that even half of even more of people who have PhD in physics do, do not end their career at university, yes? So, you know, it's a oh, question well. about uh, self-definition, I would say. I see that no, um, Mr. Lukas no, don't agree. More, That's yeah. The yeah, no, it's way more. Like, like there are 20 postdocs for every assistant professor position or, or even more. So, you know, to really kind of stick to the path, um, it's, it's very competitive. Um, and then, you know, as you see, people would do one or two postdocs, and then there is some, some other op uh, some other opportunity, and then they switch. You know, this is what um, what you know, you typically see. Um, yeah. So uh, so no, it's not half and half. You know, it's it's like I don't know, five percent versus ninety five. Well, you know, sure, sure. You know, it, yeah. So I was talking about kind of um, traditional academic path, right? So, you know, you see yourself. Well, I'm not raising my hand. I'm just, you know, waving. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, but this thing thinks that, that I want to say something. Well, all right, yeah. So I remember, you know, being on a, on a job market. So, you know, you are finishing your postdoc and then you're sending applications everywhere. And then, and then you talk to some people in the committee and then they will tell you, oh, yeah, we had 400 applications. Sorry, you didn't make it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's just very competitive environment. Um, yeah. So this is that's my take on it. I see that Mr. Marcin would like to add something. Yes. So I think that there are two important aspects here. Aspect number one is that the size of the scientific community is much, much smaller. So automatically you will have much, much less people going into and staying doing science, uh, doing science. And the other thing is that if you want to switch, if you want to start doing working in business as uh, you know, after physics, the popular stuff is like data science, software engineering, uh, lots of like different engineering. The more you stay at the university, the older you get. The older you get, the harder it is to start in, uh, in business. Uh, when you are, when you first apply for work outside uh, in academia, uh, in, in so-called business, uh, they look at your experience and they don't really. Of course, they 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 notice your, you know, PhD or postdocs, but they are looking for a real real experience. And then uh, I, I have a friend that finished PhD, PhD pretty much at the same time as, as I did. And he applied to the same company I work now in. And he, he is starting, even though we are in the same age, he was working in academia for all this time. He is starting at, a, at the entry level position because he has no business experience. He has to start all over and build this experience from ground up. So people that are finishing masters, finishing PhD, m need to make a very important and very conscious decision about their entire future. Is am I devoting my life to doing science? And you know, it's it's like for many years or tens of years, or am I planning on going to the business side? And if you are planning to go into to the business side, the sooner you go, the better for you, because the faster you can grow. 
And that's at, at some point that the switch might not be possible because basically those companies may not be interested in, you know, in, in hiring someone that is 40, 45 years old for entry level position. And they are really looking. Uh, they are really looking at, 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 uh, at the pure, you know, business experience. And of course, there are corner cases, special cases, and, and, and all of that. Uh, but in general, I think that uh, people are basically making the decision uh, that you know, you're looking many years in the future. Uh, it's uh, it's um, more optimal to to go to the business side from. You know, pure reasons that are different, but they 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 have one thing in common: money. Uh, it's much easier to grow in terms of your compensation in in business, in in science. The the distinction in the in the compensation between someone who is just you know uh, entry level postdoc and a professor with 20, 30 years experience, there is more maybe. You know, professor maybe makes twice as much, may, maybe maybe a little more. In business, you can scale ten times up. You can scale twenty times up. Uh, so that that is what what is driving the decisions of, of young people leaving the academia. I see okay. that Mr. Michal isn't agree. With, I'm not sure if he's agree with with. Mr. Yes. Martin. So I mean, I, I can. So I can tell that I fully agree with with Lukas that we should keep in mind and that all the students should keep in mind that but I, I don't know what's the estimate, but I just think five percent of students who can think about becoming professor, this is probably the the maximum. And I mean this is somehow when we look on in Warsaw, right? I mean there is maybe one hundred students on the first year, maybe fifty in the physics and fifty in some related to physics things, and then we don't hire more than three, four people per year. To the to the faculty, right? So this is this few percent. Mm. But I mean, I also don't fully agree with, with I mean, with, with with Martin that somehow. I mean, of course, it's absolutely true that if you are older, then uh, it's harder to, to 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 switch to business, or it can be the harder. But at the same time, if you are doing good research in academia, then you are like building lots of other experience. So I I I would I mean maybe also I may be biased because in quantum technologies, I mean what what is the Ukash? I would say background and where we are closer. Then in quantum technology, there is now lots of transfer. So it seems now that in fact, people not leaving research because they cannot become professor, but they just decide to do it for many different reasons. So I think this is this probably depends on the field, but but I mean there are also already professors from top universities who decide to quit quit academia. I, I mean in, in in January I met the group at Caltech and they complained a bit, peers and complained because they boss decided to quit professor position at Caltech, I mean, continuing as CEO of, of his quantum startup. I mean, the students were very happy because like the professors just wrote the email from since tomorrow, I'm not anymore, please look new supervisor. So it was not the right, I probably wait to not right way to inform your group that you are quitting job. But <laughs> but anyway, this, this is something that in some parts of, of physics kind of uh, natural. I think that this was this is probably not common in the past that people. I mean, only if you had really good idea, if you have really working company. Now, this quantum technology, there is lots of people trying to do this. So I, I would guess that still. I mean, we can also be biased with a bit that in Poland somehow there are people who try to stay as long as much in academia, not doing very well. And then, of course, if you are not doing very well in academia. Then it, I mean, you don't build your somehow skills and CV and so on after 40 or 50 years on. Then it can be very hard. But I would say that if you are continuing like in in in, uh, in top university and you are not able to get professor position at top university, but you are highly skilled postdoc, then I would guess that you can also you don't need to start from entry level. You go to senior senior in the technology that you know, right? Maybe it's hard to cross from like fundamental mathematics to something applied, but but let's say in quantum physics, uh, I would say that my observation is from the last year that it start to be the borders start to be less strict than I would expect in the past. Yeah, um, I agree with me. How, however, uh, I think it's it's an exception, and it's just now, I and mean, maybe for a few more years. So, so it's true that uh, top top scientists, um, you know, are getting offers to leave industry, you know. Uh, and those companies, you know, they are stealing our people, you know, say that. So, you know, they just send an offer to, say, a postdoc, and they can pay whatever they want, almost. So it's not that uh, we can compete with them, at least um, 
you know, money wise. So um, yeah. yeah, it's very easy switch for them. But it's but I would say it's now maybe for a few more years, and then we'll see some equilibrium. Uh, and yeah, so so these are lucky, you know, some good times for those people now. But uh, yeah, not for long, I would say. Yes, but maybe if I can add, because there was also the argument that it's good to go to business because of this kind of huge difference between CEO and 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 and, and entry level. But I think that from I, I, maybe I'm social too social in this way, but I don't think it's the best that there is like 200 or 2,000 times difference between CEO and entry level salary. I think this is rather pathological thing in our society. So this is maybe this may be my the point of view as a professor. Who earns only maybe two or three times more than postdoc, but but still I would say that like the differences are are sometimes uh, I would say not justified by by any anything, right? Miss Anna. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, uh, just to comment on uh, let's say the two different topics which have emerged. So one about how many uh, how many students go and do science and how many go to industry i think it also really depends uh, not only on the university but also on the country uh, i was really amazed so i was doing my phd in warsaw uh, and there um, the phd students usually had in mind really this framework of going to postdoc doing postdocs and uh, staying in research uh, and there is not much really information what other interesting possibilities there are for a physicist aside from teaching at school <laughs> and um, then i went for postdoc to germany uh, and there uh, at the university regularly companies were coming and uh, trying to steal the students and hire them uh, and they were really offering comp competitive uh, salaries and they were trying to attract them to do interesting projects so they were the companies were actually actively recruiting students from the university both on the uh, master's level and the phd level and higher uh, so it was a totally different approach. Maybe it will some, at some point also appear in, in Poland. I don't know. Uh, but it was a, a eye opening to see how many interesting things one can also do outside of academia and that also outside of academia, physicists are really very um, uh, cherished, uh, especially in, in some specific fields, obviously. Uh, so, so that was very interesting to see. Uh, and in terms of this uh, um, time to get get involved in, in industry, in general, I agree that it's much easier uh, to start earlier uh, because there's a lot uh, also to learn in, in it's a different thing uh, in, in business. And when you transfer, uh, you start obviously uh, with a junior position. But uh, so I, I was one of the people who transferred quite late. So I, I did uh, um, basically like a two and a half uh, postdocs and then moved uh, to industry. Uh, so I already had quite a lot of experience. And I must say that uh, maybe that was that's because the company that I work for uh, has so much uh, relations uh, with uh, with uh, science. But it was uh, also an asset, the, the type of experience that I had. And uh, yes, I started with a junior position, but then I could uh, move uh, up uh, really quickly and become independent and basically um, the, have a, a big responsibility and have a leading position uh, from very early on. So it's. It's not like if you wait too long, uh, it, it's too late at some point. <laughs> well, maybe in some fields, but I think with physics, uh, um, the things that we learn uh, in, in science uh, can be really useful in other fields and can be an advantage. Mr. Jakub? Uh, you should uh, unmute some, uh, just be, yeah. Just be yeah, unmute. Yeah. I forgot, yes, 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 and now it's me. Yes, I also yes. wanted to add a few words about like my, my approach to planning your career because there were some here the contrast yes between the scientific career and career in business. 
And uh, of course, to some extent, extent it obviously exists, yes, but um, I personally, my approach is that, especially in modern times, uh, the career is a very, very dynamical thing, yes. I don't think many people will end up with the same job after 20, 30 years and the change might be drastic. And even in, in when some, someone stays in academia, I think it doesn't mean that it's static for him. Also, your area of expertise, your area of research can change drastically, yes, and the type of work you do changes drastically. And because of this, I, I prefer, at least personally, to think about uh, developing yourself, not the career at the first place, and the career follows, yes. So uh, if you don't know even what your future will be if you want to stay on academia or in business, if you are thinking about yourself, about developing your skills, yes, the wild toolbox of, of skills which will be useful in many branches of both applications and university, you should be fine, yes. And even if you are sure, you should keep it in mind, yes, uh, to be a person which somehow is universal, who can change, yes, not only like specialize in one thing. So how about being universal, Mr. Darius? What would you like to add? Oh. Uh, well, how about being universal? Oh. So, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I still, I still, um, well, I, I say I agree with uh, what Martin said here that um, for most people, if you want to move to industry, the sooner you move, you, the, the, the sooner you decide to make this shift, the better. Uh, and in some exceptions, yes, it is true that staying in academia and being expert in some field uh, also is a huge benefit. Uh, this is what uh, Michal said that uh, if you if you stay and uh, well develop yourself in a field, then some company can find a value in in in, in you and can well offer you a. Uh, job position, etc. However, this is not like it is. It is. Um, it, you need to be in a you know sexy field. It, it cannot be just any field. It needs to be something that's on top, that's very close to real applications. So there is a difference if you uh, do a PhD in psychology, and there is difference if you do PhD in physics, and not only any physics. It needs to be something very close to real applications. If you stay long in academia, there are very uh, like real applications that can be used in industry. This might be also a good uh, career path and good solution long term, right? And coming back to what we were talking about about students and their choices. So um, I think everyone around the world faces the same problem that there is not enough PhD students that everyone is fighting to get good PhD students. So this is like really difficult to, to find them. And uh, well, later uh, finding some postdocs, maybe it's a little bit easier, I don't know, but I think there is uh, still some space for uh, to find some postdoc positions, um, but it is very difficult to to find something after postdoc position. So what I've learned, what I've heard from my friends, my colleagues, it is uh, impossible to, or almost impossible, or very difficult to find a permanent position after becoming a postdoc. So uh, what, what people usually have, they, uh, they have a couple of postdocs uh, just waiting for a permanent position to, to come over, right? So, um, so it is, it is uh, difficult to choose uh, where to go it is important to have to be flexible, to to be sensible, to know what's happening in the industry, and uh, if someone wants to stay uh, uh, in fundamental research, it's fine. They if they good, they will do a, a fantastic career path. But if somebody wants to do uh, a shift to to industry, it's better to think about it on an early stage and to choose. Um, like uh, to choose like this path very carefully, not to be stuck in some you know dead end uh, subject where you will need to go to company and start from the entry position. Mr. Martin, I see that there are still hand hand up. Yeah, I have so many comments to stuff that was said across 
few minutes, uh, but I, I, I want to emphasize the importance of the, the right choice in terms of the field of study. Uh, if, if you decide to try your luck and find a job outside academia and you show up with the resume and it says, I have a PhD in physics, no one has questions. It's a PhD in physics. It speaks for itself. Uh, if you will show up and you have a PhD in pretty much anything else and you're applying for, a, let's say, consulting job as a consultant, as a data scientist, as a consultant, as a software engineer, as a whatever, they will ask you a question, why are you shifting with your career? Because you, you did a PhD in something di else, something different. No one will ask you that if you show up with a PhD in physics. They will be like, oh, cool, you have PhD in physics. That's great. I have no questions because I'm not smart enough to ask questions in general. Um, so studying physics and having the, the PhD or master's in physics uh, is a great leverage if you want to, uh, to go outside academia. Even if you don't want to go outside academia, I would say that it's, uh, it's worth trying to basically see what, uh, what's, what, what are my chances, what are my possibilities, what are my options. Uh, even if you are happy with your work, it's always nice to, from time to time, apply for some a job offer that you, are, you find interesting to, to basically open yourself an opportunity to, to, to rethink what you're doing. Uh, and to allow yourself, maybe it's time for a change if you know if, if they want you. Uh, so again, studying physics is, is very important. Another thing that I think is important is to to plan that you might eventually may uh, to to um, apply for a position outside academia. Uh, industry or business works a little bit different than, than academia. The, the, the things, they, they, they are called the same, but they, they, they work differently. So uh, I think it's uh, what I remember lacking from my, uh, uh, my journey through, through physics in, in, at the University of Warsaw was complete lack of connection to, uh, to any business. Uh, what I was doing, there's, there was no applied stuff. So basically, I, I applied for my first job outside, and this is where I were, were learned how how stuff really works in a in a in a in a small company or a big company outside academia, and things work differently there. So what I would recommend that you know faculty of physics should do is basically have a cycle of meetings or or, or kind of. Uh, places where people, uh, students can meet representative of business, even recruiters to basically touch this, you know, industry world to understand how different it is from, from academia. Because then after, you know, spending uh, five years doing master's, four years or five years doing PhD, because like usually PhD on physics takes longer than four years, people are shocked that the world outside academia is so different. Uh, I would, I agree completely here if I can comment very shortly. And it's not only about making people aware of how these words can be very different, but also making a uh, student, I mean, it would greatly help me personally in my career if at the level of the university I was more aware of even the types of jobs that physicists can do uh, in companies. I didn't even know, you know, the names of positions, like the types of, like the, the tasks, the, the types of things that you can do uh, as a physicist uh, in industry. And I think it's a, it's a very, uh, it, it's, it's sad because we have to realize that most of the students uh, in physics actually will not end up with a, um, with a research uh, or academic career. And we have to take care of these people as well. <laughs> Mr. Jakub, I see yes, that. Uh, okay, maybe, maybe it counts as an advertisement, but this meeting with business, yes, who come and recruit students, it is precisely what my faculty is doing. Uh, so sometimes it happens. And of course, for students, it has a big benefit, but it also has its risks. 
because uh, usually young people were well, not only young people are inexperienced yes so you, you must also remember that these companies when they came you know they don't think about benefits of people they hire they, they basically have young you know you, they want to have young workers and uh, also from even my experience of Omar faculty you also must teach students you know to be uh to be doubtful yes uh, to think about what they offer and what they do to pr plan for their careers because uh, these companies they also have their own narrative you know so, so sometimes it's better to wait yes it's better to check different sources and uh, there's also risk when even during the studies somehow goes to you and shows stuff to you because they show what they want yes but of course overall it benefits it benefits students we, we still do it yes but we do it like wisely, I would say. Uh, yes, I, if I can agree with that. Uh, but then as a, as a large faculty that has a lot of people that uh, finished, uh, finished PhD, finished masters and worked in the industry for years, you have a lot of contacts as a, as a faculty to, to invite people that are physicists, finish the same courses, finish the same faculty, they can come back after years, five years, 10 years, 15 years, and they can tell about their own experience. And if you, know, if you, if you put those people with st students in the room, you, you won't record stuff and you won't put it online, these people might tell you what, how it really works, what it really is. And it, they might tell you what, what, they, are, what they miss from being being at a faculty because there are stuff that I miss from you know working at the at the faculty uh, after my PhD, I liked it, but there are stuff that was uh, impossible doing that. Like and again, I I want to emphasize the financial aspect of that is super important for people uh, nowadays. It, it's getting more and more important every every year. Uh, so uh, if you if you bring such people to the discussion, I think that it that might be super beneficial for the student and for my. I remember teaching students uh, like the mm, computer science, uh, how you know how to begin to code, and now when I'm I was doing that, I, I am still doing that for a living. Let's say, I would use this time with the students completely differently. I would still teach them how to how to do stuff that I teach them, but I would tell a completely different story to them to more prepare them for the stuff that they will see outside academia. I see that Mr. Jakub and Mr. Ann agree with with what Martin Mr. Martin said. But how about uh, Mr. Lukash? Yeah, let me let me add something to that. Um, so what I see very popular here, I mean in the U.S., uh, is internship. So almost every student would take any opportunity to do internships somewhere. So, you know, this is what I see on many CVs, you know, almost after every year, you know, they would take those two or three months uh, to work somewhere as an intern. So, you know, one year it's Google, the other one is NASA, then IBM, and then at the end of, you know, their um, undergrad, then they have, big CV that, that, you know, they can apply to many places. They've been many places. They've seen how other places work. So I don't remember, I think, any of my colleagues when I was a student in, in Poland. That was never a topic of discussion. Like, like, what do you do over summer? You know, that was always like a free time, all right? You know, we meet after two months. But, you know, here they take every op opportunity to gain experience, uh, to you know, hire themselves somewhere. Uh, well, I I organize one such thing, one such internship at Los Alamos. So you know, um, if I can have a little plug here. So we have this quantum computing summer school that I that I run, and um, and it's a great opportunity for you know those students to do research in quantum computation, and then to to launch their career you know based on that. So they have some real project that they work on. There is a paper already at a very young stage of their career, and that's very helpful. So yeah, I just I just want to mention that I haven't seen that when I was a student. That was kind of never an option, so to speak. 
actually, if if I can comment on this, I totally agree with Lukas that it is like uttermost importance to be active, proactive, and if you have some like uh, company in mind where you think you could work just go and apply just ask them for the internship and uh, try your uh, like uh, whatever it takes to to get into an internship right because um i agree like abroad it's even like in the uk they have something called sandwich uh, course when you go to university you study for a year or two then you go for a year to for an internship to different companies and university very often helps with choosing those companies and there are good companies like jaguar or rolls royce and then similar and uh, later you come back to university you finish it and you have some idea how this world looks like and well myself being in uh well in poland i i had this luck uh that i i i, I had opportunity to work in in laboratory in in Torun in uh in poland to see how this lab experience looks like i had opportunity to go to work for uh, g uh hitachi in in the us for internship over the summer i had uh, also a chance to go into university to birmingham to do my uh, other internship which also helped me to find my phd position there so uh, being proactive and looking around helps for sure and helps to uh, shape the career and if I might quickly add, uh, not only U.S. Uh, companies uh, offer internships, uh, Polish companies also offer internships. So you're welcome. <laughs> How about the University of Warsaw? No, so maybe because I, I want to add about internships, because it seems that we a bit old people don't realize. I mean, now it's obligatory. It's part of your of your undergrad studies. The external internships, they are obligatory. So I think that both on the bachelor level and master level. Of course, I mean, this external internship can be done as a uh, industrial internship and also it can be research internship. So I think some students, my students usually, they go rather for, in, for research internship, like to Los Alamos or, or other places, but, but absolutely it's okay to, to go from the physics department. I think, I'm not sure if it's like the national level obligatory, for sure it's obligatory here at the University of Warsaw for physics students. So. I don't know if it's four weeks, six weeks in the summer, but you have to do it, right? So in this sense, there is some improvement, let's say, forcing you to get this external experience. And I also fully agree with this comment. I mean, I would say that awareness is very important. I, I would say that for undergrad students, maybe thinking if you want to be physicist, like the research physicist in the future is not the most important. There is like you select physics because it's great great uh, subject to study. But I think that awareness of PhD students should be something that we should work more in the sense that they should be aware that really i mean at best 10 maybe 30 percent at university of Warsaw because somehow we can send some of our peers to other universities to some other institution but still i would say at the best university still not more than 30 percent of phd students will become full professors in the future and i think this is good to live a dream of this but you should be aware that i mean with some probability of course i mean there are some exceptional people who know from the beginning that they can do whatever they want in the academic life in the future that they are quite sure to continue successfully but this is some small fraction most of the people are cannot be sure and i think probably we don't we don't tell this i mean in general not only in poland in the world we don't make graduate students uh, aware that that, they, 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 that this is kind of the option. But other thing that I think that there are some differences. So for example, I mean, of course, in, in countries like Germany, where there is lots of industrial job, research industrial jobs, there is obvious some, some students already from the second year or maybe from the beginning of the graduate studies, they know that they will go to business. But still, I mean, this does not stop them from being really devoted to doing the research during the, during the graduate studies. And for example, in Poland, I sometimes had a, a bit other, other like observation that unfortunately, once you decide that you don't want to push your, your research, then you are not so focused. So I would say, I, I hope this is not, not uh, aware kind of actions of our faculties that they don't put the, this kind of clear picture, you will not become professor, being afraid that non-motivated PhD students, they will just stop uh, being focused on research. But, but somehow this is something that I really like, especially in Germany, that even the people who know that yet yeah, they finish PhD in, in, in Stuttgart, so they have many offers from Bosch and Porsche to do whatever, if it is not, not related to ultra-cold physics, 
Still, they work until the last day of their PhD, focused very well on their scientific project, not related even to their future job. So, so this is something that, that I, I would say we are also missing. But I fully agree that kind of awareness of the opportunities, and maybe the last thing, because we are a bit worried about the kind of not enough information for students, what opportunities they have. But I must say, I have never heard about any 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 student or any alumni of the physics at of Warsaw who had who would have problems with finding job, right? So the point is that I mean, of course, not as a physics professor. This this can can be challenging, but but like in IT consulting or business, I mean, I, I really don't have among my friends or among students that I supervise. I didn't. I haven't any hear any story that that somehow uh, trouble with finding the, the job. So I don't know if it's more general, but. So in this sense, we are worried about that maybe students don't know about all the opportunities, but at the end they are doing quite well. So, so I don't tell that <laughs> I should do nothing with this, but but something. Um, this is kind of observation. So because I, I really, of course, believe that studying physics is something that is the best choice to do many different jobs from 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 banking to 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 hardcore industry. So, yeah. So this would be my comment, Mr. Martin. So one thing that people should realize as soon as they can is there is one resource that we all have the same amount of. And it's the most valuable resource there is, time. And someone mentioned before that you know spending your summer basically not doing nothing is wasting this resource. And of course, people need to, to rest, people need to, to reset. But having a like three-month vacation is, is not a normal thing in, a, in an adult life, right? Uh, so there are different ways of investing this uh, this time that we have uh, into into the future. Like go, doing an internship is is a one thing. Uh, internship is a is a let's say it's a it's a full-time commitment. You can do that during summer, but you can also spend your uh, your time that you have available. Uh, on top of the, the, the studying uh, during the during the year, being involved in things. That there is a ton of, I know I, I am from coding industry, from so I, I look at that from this perspective. But there is a ton of open source projects. There is a ton of uh, need for people to to invest time to invest knowledge, and this is where you contribute. This is where you learn, and this is where you gain something that you can build your portfolio on. Uh, so you know, after after finishing studying, you can you have something that you achieved on top of the on top of the study uh, that proves your uh, your capabilities, proves your experience, and and it's it's really liked by uh, by recruiters uh, both to small startup companies and to, and to huge multinational um, corporations. Uh, so that might be uh, a, a, a way of spending your time. And you, people need to realize that studying physics is hard and it occupies a lot of time. But, you know, when you, when, when you grow, you will have less and less time because you will have a demanding job. And to be honest, there is just few jobs out there that are eight hours a day, uh, eight, to, eight to four or eight to five, depending how, on which continent you calculate the hours. Uh, most work, most uh, jobs take more than, than this eight hours a day. Uh, on top of that, you will probably have family at some point. On top of that, you will probably have kids at some point and stuff. Basically, time vanishes. You will have no time to, spare on, uh, to, to spend on the stuff that is interesting on top of the work. Uh, studying is where you have the most time. So just invest, invest it wisely, invest it towards your uh, your personal future. Uh, I, I fully agree, and uh, I can also stress that what, what I observe uh, in companies uh, is that uh, one of the very things that they're very hesitant about is hiring a person that has no experience, uh, it no had no contact at all uh, with industry in their life. So. Obviously, having an internship um, uh, in your CV uh, can be for, for the, the young people who are hopefully somewhere on the other side of the screen here. Uh, I, I think that can be a very big advantage uh, when they'll be looking for their first job, 
no matter whether they they plan to uh, to move to industry right now or not, uh, I, I'm sure that it won't be a wasted uh, time uh, to, to do an internship and then be able to say, here, I have already some experience in this company and uh, uh, and I know how this world looks like. I see that Mr. Darius would like to uh, add something. Yes, uh, so I, I also want to comment uh, something that uh, Michal said earlier about uh, well the, the, the internship that is available at the university. So, uh, well, during my times, this, uh, this internship, they were also obligatory and every student had to take these internships. But the thing is that uh, it's it's not always um, very. Um, I mean, w w what I see in Poland, there is not uh, much support from the university side, maybe, uh, to choose the right internship. And uh, I, I know people who you know just needed to take some internship, so they they went to their parents' company or brother's company just to have a paper that they did the internship. And uh, what I would like to see is. Uh, that, for example, university collaborates with industry, and they they uh, tr the university um, con like uh, shows to industry that there is a real benefit to uh, get access to the most skilled uh, students from universities. So so those companies they want to offer. Um, some internships and paid internships to to the best students at different universities, and uh, well, I, I'm not I, I don't know how it works at University of Warsaw. Maybe this is how it works right now, but uh, like from uh, also what, what I see, this is what what it looks like in other countries like probably U.S. Uh, U.K. and and in Poland, I, I still uh, I think. Uh, the, the different companies they don't realize that they can have access to this to these skilled uh, university students and maybe the collaboration is stronger in some subjects like uh, programming uh, but in in physics I still cannot see this link between industry and, and, and academia yeah I think unfortunately you are right in the sense that probably this can be improved so from my perspective, of course, as supervisor, usually I prefer my students to go to Los Alamos than to, to Criotech because I'm doing theoretical physics. But, uh, but of course, I think that it would be good for students if we, for example, make some base database of this kind of offers where companies can really put their offers and, and convince the company that it would to have our student for summer. And, and, I can see that, that there are many raised hands, but I just wanted to say something for all the, the young people about internships, because we, we have this experience, obviously, with people coming uh, and uh, applying for internships uh, at, at our company. Do not, like when we ask you what you would like to do for, for your internship, do not say, oh, I'm here only to get this grade that I did the internship and I don't want to do anything. This is really for so many reasons, not the thing to say. <laughs> Mr. Jakub. I, oh, oh, yes, I, I have some, yes, I have some uh, experience with uh, companies with offer internship to students. And uh, of course, yes, the internship is a great opportunity for students, but we also must remember both we at the university and uh, students even more uh, that uh, not necessarily the internship must be beneficial in a sense that not necessarily a company, uh, don't, uh, you know, it's not in their business actually to develop you. Often they, force, for, for example, they, they want some cheap workforce, yes, and they want to get unexperienced uh, workers uh, to do simple stuff and keep them with low wages, you know. So uh, looking at what university can do, it's very good if the students, uh, you know, are backed by the university because student as a person who starts his career, it's a very low position. It's weak position. It's hard to fight for yourself. So it's important to, you know, uh, to for the university to help students to negotiate good contracts for students to do internship. And it's also, I think, a worth thing to consider for students, for example, which university they want to choose this university will help them or not yes 
And it's also important to be criti critical of the internships, to like, you know, don't go at the first opportunity to look, to check, choose, and choose the one that will really, you know, help you develop because it's not obvious. Yes, it may not happen at all if you are not careful enough. I think I will comment on this. This is not only about universe, like uh, internships, but it's also about uh, work positions. So, uh, I mean, it's better to wait and look uh, for a good job position for the beginning than just start any job position and end up also in a, in a place where you started a work in some company that was not good and will give you like not good references in the end. I yes, and uh, I fully agree with what you're saying, Darius. Also, from this perspective, then, uh, if you decide that this position is not for, for you and you decide to quit and move somewhere else, everyone will ask you why did you quit after two months did you did they kick you out after two months or half a year it's really uh, not well seen in a cv that you're changing positions frequently or changing companies frequently uh, so it's it's also on this level it's an advantage to to choose uh, uh, the company wisely because it's better to stick stick around for uh, for some time there also for the cv and for the career Mr. Lukas, I see a hand up. Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to say that, that we're, it depends on the market, of course, right? But but there's a lot of competition, you know, at least here for those internships. So so you know which ones are good. Um, you just trust your friends around. And, uh, and let me tell you, at Los Alamos, you know, those internships are great. You know, we pay a lot of money and we, and we typically offer um, some other positions rather than internship. So... Uh, something like graduate research assistant, for example, which you know could last for years, uh, and then so on. Um, also, postdoc positions and then staff. So, um, yeah, of course, you know you need to be careful, right? But um, but you know at some level, it's you know hard to to go wrong. You know, as you as you develop your career, you well, obviously you discuss with your friends, right? And then uh, and then some some options are very safe. Like, you know, I haven't heard, you know, too, too many unhappy internships at, I, at IBM Quantum, for example, you know, they're, they're doing great work, they're publishing papers or, or at Google. So, um, yeah, there is a lot of competition in this, in this market as well. Companies value young people uh, and they typically, and this is also what we do, uh, and they call that pipeline, you know, <laughs> so they hire young young people they say look our company is great you know why don't you apply to it um yeah so you know this is um this is also something that those companies and other institutions are are investing in so so those positions are are good because if they're not good then the students will not come back so this is the voice from opinion from los alamos how about the end-to-end -end analytics mr martin so uh, I agree completely that in the U.S. this uh, internship market is completely different than it is in Poland, but I, I do hope that Poland is trying to catch up. I remember when we had uh, obligatory uh, internship on like third, fourth year, it, it was a joke, let's be honest. It was a joke for everyone who participated, but I do hope that it's, uh, it's better now and I, my probable recommendation is that for internship, it's probably wise to go with a with a big company uh, like Google in uh, in both in Poland and the U.S. Uh, like Accenture, that we are now part of. Accenture has a has a large uh, internship program, or any other big company there is. Uh, big companies are prepared to deal with interns. Uh, they have programs for interns. They know how to deal with interns. They know what interns are capable of, and they are they know how to leverage interns, how to offer interns a uh, future position uh, for the benefit of, of the intern. Uh, if you choose small local company, they will probably use you as a cheap workforce or like free workforce, or basically they, they want to have someone check the box that, oh, we are participating in the internship program. Oh, here's an intern. Just sit down, don't touch anything, and I will see you in a month to sign your release paper. 
Um, so go with a big company. But I wanted to uh, to steer the discussion. Sorry for for doing that. Uh, and give one um, uh, one example, one thing that I think academia and working uh, in academia gives you that is super difficult when you when you switch to industry. And this is going finding the job uh, abroad in different places around the world. Uh, I think that this is this is super important for people. This is a great opportunity that when you're looking for a postdoc position or for a for a PhD program, you you are open to look for that anywhere in the world. So if you if you are if you're thinking about finding or you know, trying to to leave for a while in in different part of the world, uh, seeing different culture and being paid money for that, that's that's the great. Uh, place to to try this out. Once you switch to to the industry, to the business side, it gets at least complicated to to switch countries. Uh, it's it's much harder to get a work permit. So, for example, if you want to, if you go, if you want to go to the US, uh, it's much harder to work, to get a work uh, work approval, a visa for for like a professional uh, work. It's super easy to get it as a as a you know academic transfer. Uh, of course, there are some limits. You cannot uh, use that to, to to work and and so on and so on. But a lot of people leverages that. You can you can then stay there, work in academia, then switch the industry, and and stay in the US if you if you if you like that. And this works across the globe, uh, in in Europe, in North America, in Asia. So if this is something that you are thinking about, consider staying in you know after PhD and leveraging this possibility. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. I, I have to join out of the meeting. Um, I'm giving a okay, talk. Okay, thank you very much, two minutes. Mr. Uh, it, was, for... it was a pleasure talking to you uh, and meeting you all. Uh, and I and I hope to see you at some point. Okay, okay. gotta go. Thank, thank, bye thank bye. you very much for spending your time with, with us. Bye-bye. Sure. Okay, so uh, I see three hands up, and also I see one question on the from the YouTube, from the live chat. So please just let's 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 um, let's finish this topic, and we'll just move to the next uh, part of our discussion. So, Mr. Ann, I see that your mic is switched on. Uh, yeah, so, so uh, just wanted to comment uh, on on the internship uh, comment. <laughs> so, uh, I in general I agree uh, with uh, Martin uh, that if you're just looking around, looking for for first experience in industry, but you're not really sure or you're not interested in, in moving to industry, uh, and you're not really sure what you'd like to do. Uh, it's a very good idea to go to a big and established company for two reasons. One is that they have these dedicated internship programs. And uh, the second is uh, that uh, they, they're they uh, usually a known company. So also for the future, uh, it looks nice in your CV to have an internship with, uh, with Google or whatever. Uh, but uh, I also have to give a bit of justice to smaller companies, like, for example, our own, um, and explain maybe to you a bit how, how it works. So for us, uh, internships, uh, I mean, taking proper care of an intern requires uh, a lot of our own time and effort, and it's an investment. So we consider it this way. So we usually just simply say no uh, to students who come and say, oh, I'm just going to do this because of the, the grades uh, for, or the score for, for this course, or um, that we see that there is no way that this person will ever fit into the company. We, we usually just say no and, and that's it. Uh, but if we see that the person uh, has potential to actually join the company, um, then we really do invest this time. And it's, I, I believe that these are really very good internships and actually they're um, concrete results. So uh, many of the people in our R&D group now uh, joined the company by first doing an internship and then they were offered a job and they're often uh, combining now the job uh, at uh, 
our company with studies. So we also offer uh, like a part-time position so people can still study and work. Um, and this is uh, of, of great value, but I believe mostly for people who are really decided that they'd like to start working in industry and they really show an interest and capabilities to join this specific small company. Mr. Darius? Yeah, I'll just uh, say that uh, to be to not make it too long, that I agree with Martin. Actually, starting in a big company internship, uh, well, you, you can do it. I mean, you just apply it, apply for it, and it's available, right? So you, all you need to do is just ask. But I also uh, agree with Anna because uh, smaller companies are also valuable. We also uh, rather like uh, not like a huge corporation. And uh, at Fluence, we value good students. Uh, we want to have interns. So if you want to work with lasers, come to us. Uh, we'll give you some hands-on experience. It won't be like uh, you know sweeping the floor. But what Anna said, you have to come to us and you have to ask about specific uh, thing. I mean, it's not like, oh, uh, we receive sometimes this phone call saying that, oh, you know, I saw there is some ad in, in the website. Uh, I, I need to do this internship. You know, uh, you know, maybe I can come to you. You know, it's. I mean, don't do that, right? If you want to have internship with us, uh, send your CV. It might be empty, but please do send CV and try not to make some uh, mistakes in the CV. That's already big success. And then just tell us what you want to do. It might be building lasers, it might be R&D in optics, it might be some sales, it might be marketing. I mean, it's really, you tell us what you want to do, we, we will consider it. If we see that you're uh, well full of energy, you want to do something that matters, we'll certainly talk to you, we'll give you opportunity. And also I, I, I want to We'll say one more thing that from our perspective, okay, it's what Anna said, it takes us a lot of time to invest in training, but it's not only time, it's also sometimes that if we, uh, we had, we also learn how to train people because sometimes we take students who don't have like much experience, we let them use some exp expensive equipment and then it turns out that, you know, the equipment is broken, right? Because they they didn't follow the the, the 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 procedures or something. So we also have to to take some time to to work with this new people, with the students, to make sure we can trust them and they can become independent in what they do. And the last remark about the internships, Mr. Jakub. Yes, mm, I thought uh, I I've actually heard here. I've I think a few very valuable things and it would be good to stress them uh, and say them once again very explicitly for our uh, viewers, yes? For example, Mr. Michal Tomza said as a remark that he was talking with many of his students, yes, uh, and his cooperators and they had absolutely no problem with finding a job, yes? Mr. Marcin Porokowski also said that if you are a young man with a PhD it gives a great impression, yes? They give the impression you are a very smart guy. And I think keeping, and my experience, my personal experience is the same. That it's, well, if you are, it's very easy to actually find a job if you are a physicist. So uh, what I want, want for our viewers to have, uh, keep in their mind is that it means that their position is good. That uh, actually being a physicist is a good leverage in finding a job. You will find a job. It's not a problem of finding a job, but by be, by having such a good studies, you just can find a best job. Yes. So you need the confidence because I know very many young people may be afraid. Yes, they don't know how it's to have a job, have adult life, and they must be careful. Uh, they uh, they are maybe too careful. Yes, uh, they may panic, and you should not panic. You actually have a, a good situation. And you are in such a good situation, can use your studies to think carefully to get the best job, yes? Uh, to be wise about your choices. As I say, you, you should have a confidence in yourself. It's very important, yes? And it helps in finding the best job possible, not only any job and any internship. It's the same for both, as we said. 
Okay, so let's uh, let's suppose that we don't panic, that we are confident, that we find a job, a great job, even the best job. But how about the situation? Uh, okay, we are the uh, we are the we are working in academia or in a in a company. But where uh, where is easier uh, to have good work life balance? In industry or in academia, Mr. Jakub, maybe. Tough question. Yeah, <laughs> tough um, question. I know. <laughs> okay, uh, it might be hard to compare, you know, because we are speaking about very general terms here. Yes, there is no such thing as general business. There are so many types of jobs. I can, if I would like, it, I don't think it has any sense. Yes, to discuss about their own, and in academia too. They have maybe very different positions and very different types of jobs. But for sure, there's a huge difference in, be in between in the difference between like creative jobs. Yes, I would say standard jobs. There is a huge difference if you just need to go and to an office and work for eight hours and you talk with people, they give you tasks and uh, between jobs in you, to, you need to sell problems with you yourself. They just give you a problem. You have two weeks and solve it. Yes. Because then you you organize your time yourself, yes. And uh, I would say it's maybe even harder, you know, to give this to have this work-life balance if you are creating jobs. And you are a physicist, there is a huge, much higher probability that if you end with such a job, uh, with such a job, then you know, having different types of studies. And which one is best? Actually, I would also say it's hard to generalize. You must think about your personality because for one person it fits, for other you don't. And at least I hope that having these studied studies from physics, which also, you know, uh, require you to maybe have some projects, manage them on your own and can help you know, decide if it's something for yourself. So how about fluence technology, Mr. Darius? So, uh, so I say that I, I, I know many people who were in academia and they shifted to, to industry. And one of the reasons why they wanted to change to the industry was that uh, they could work in like limited hours, right? They were not uh, working all day, all night. Because if you want to stay in academia, you have this very competitive field. If you want to be successful, get some permanent position, you need many publications, you need to get funding. And all, all that rests on usually like one or a couple of people and they have to organize everything. They have to be in the lab, write papers, write grant proposals. And uh, from like uh, people who I know, they just sit all day or night and they are expected to work like 80 hours a week, maybe longer over the weekends, uh, just to meet the, the deadlines. And if you, well, uh, in the industry very often, you are not allowed to work too long, right? I mean, uh, I, I have friends who, for example, moved to Germany and, uh, uh, you know, they are legally not allowed to work more than, let's say, this uh, 40 or 50 hours a week because, uh, well, they just can't, right? Because uh, the trade unions will uh, sue them or, or something like that. In, in Poland, uh, maybe it depends on what position you have. If you're in uh, higher positions, of course, it's, it's a different story. You're, you have a bigger responsibility and you're also uh, more difficult to maintain this work-life balance. But uh, for sure, like entry position, like most of the positions in the industry, I believe, uh, you can have better work-life balance. And how about Mr. Michał? Yes, yes, I fully agree with Darius and, and not fully with Jakub that I don't have any doubt where it's easier, that, that it's much easier in business than in academia. I would say among my friends, also most of them who left uh, academia, I mean, most of them was, was living for few reasons, but this life balance, uh, uh, was one of the main important reasons. I, I think in academia it's very hard for the reasons that were, were mentioned here. So, so, and I think that in, exactly as was described in, in, in business, of course, maybe some students here they can have doubt because 
uh, for example, they think about business in terms of CEOs, like of new startups in, in Silicon Valley, right? And of course, if you are CEO of the new startup, you don't have life work balance, but this is like much smaller fraction of people than full professors in, in academia. So in this sense, this is not typical, typical, like, like, like uh, how typical work in, in business looks like, right? So, so I would say that unfortunately for academia, the life work balance is one of the weakest part of working here, but there are many other grand, great things here. So don't worry. <laughs> Miss Anna? I should... Sorry, I had to unmute myself. Um, so from my experience, it, it depends on your approach. I think that if you want to be successful, if you want to make a career, uh, then you, you lose the work-life balance both in, in academia and in business. Um, and so in that sense, it's similar. But one thing that from my side uh, speaks definitely um, in favor of business is uh, the feeling that you have, I think the feeling that you have more control over your career in the sense that uh, in academia, before you get a, a, a permanent position, you end in this limbo uh, of postdocs where you know all the time that you have just a, a temporary job and you'll have to move to somewhere else in, in two years or, or three years. And then when you look for a permanent position, it's also a very tough um, experience. And uh, you often end up with a choice. Either you get a permanent position but it's, I don't know, in Korea or whatever, or, or you uh, have to do another postdoc or something. Um, while in industry, if, if you start working at a company and you really fit in, uh, then, then you just get the permanent position and you, you feel like you're more in control of what's happening next. If you want to leave, then it's your choice that you want to leave somewhere else. Mr. Martin, we already heard uh, some voices in the background, so you, you add me that you are spending also the time with your daughters right now, so maybe it's a, uh, yes. it's a clue for us. <laughs> I have four daughters, fifth on the way, so I am a work-life balance expert here. <laughs> but the one thing I want to emphasize is that in any kind of job, you can, sp if you want to spend 14 hours a day at work, you can do that. Uh, my personal experience with academia was that I had like several things across the week that I had to attend and the rest was super flexible. However, I agree with the fact that, you know, position in academia is, is a more temporary thing. You need to still fight for your future. You need to, when you get the grant, you're immediately starting to think, okay, what I will do when it, when it's, when it ends. Uh, so I need to start looking for the next one right now. So it's, it's all like stressful, stressful thing. Uh, as far as I remember in, in industry there, first of all, Right now, after the pandemic, uh, the m majority of people uh, can work remotely. Even when office is open, companies realize there is no point of commuting to the office, spending the office. So being remote, even if you, if you have a lot of work to do, being at home allows you to, uh, to, 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 to be helpful for your family, to spend more time with your family. If you spend eight hours of work, it's eight hours in work. It, it does not include one and a half hour in the morning when you need to prepare and commute, and another an hour or so in the in the afternoon when you you, you need to commute back. You got this this time uh, this time back, and uh, of course when you are in a junior position, this that you have much less uh, flexibility. It's uh, it's more nine to five, eight to five kind of kind of job. Uh, when you grow within your career, you start to manage other people's uh, people. It's it, it can of course go both ways. You can you as a manager, you can have as much work that basically takes you 12 hours a day every day and and weekends. But if you are a, if you are efficiently managing people, you can gain this flexibility uh, uh, back. And 
I probably said that at the beginning, but making better money for your work also helps your work-life balance a bit. So uh, I would I would say that uh, it's uh, it's better in the in the industry in the business side. Let's come back to Mr. Jakub because I'm not sure if, if he agree with everything. No, I agree. I just wanted to ask that. Let us be frank. Everything is contemporarily risky for your long, uh, uh, yes, your work-life balance. There are not good, cho good choices here. There are only bad choices. Of course, I don't have personal experience with business, but I would say that at least for academia, it's just unpredictable. Yes, you can have periods in which it's great, then it goes completely derailed. And you may also expect that uh, if you really want to invest in academia, the higher position you will have, the worse it will become. So it can be also like creeping. It can be both, you know, unpredictable. Some new grant starts, some new project starts, and everything goes bad. Yes, or it can like increase in both ways. So um, in this regard, I think at least the industry is more predictable if you are, you know, uh, work at one place. Okay. Uh, before we go to, to Mr. Michal, just one remark. Uh, remember that you can always uh, ask your questions to participants on the live chat on YouTube and we'll try to, to ask them. Uh, Mr. Michal, you would like to add something? Yes, so maybe because it was partially already mentioned by Anna and others, but about this kind of, I, I think this is important difference about academia and, and, and business, this kind of mobility and in fact the forced mobility in academia. In Poland until now it was not yet so visible in the sense that if you really wanted to be professor in, in Warsaw and if you could be professor you could do it. But I think in the world, in US or in the Western Europe, it's absolutely not the case. You are professor at the end where the job is for you. And it's really extremely hard to get the professor position in the town that you wish. This is almost impossible, right? You can more or less define that you want to be in the south of Germany. I mean, except some super like top top, like if you are not one top top person, then of course you choose. But all other people, most of the other people, they go where the position is including like different states, different countries even. So I think this is something in, uh, in business, I mean, absolutely no one. I mean, if you want to work in Warsaw, you can do it. And I can tell like from my experience, well, not my experience, but experience of my friends. So so I have friends who, for example, decided I want to, they, they like quitting PhD or finishing PhD that they want to get a job in Barcelona. And then in IT, they got a job in next week, right? Or they decide to move with wife to Switzerland. They did. Of course, it's a bit more complex to, to move than for moving for internships in academia, right? Or for postdoc. I mean, maybe it can be easier to move between countries for postdoc, but it will be not permanent, right? So you cannot decide that you go until the end of, the, of your life into Switzerland. But as in business, it's maybe this kind of entrance barrier to switch to move is a bit higher, but it's absolutely not so high that you don't, I mean, it's easy at the end comparing to getting a permanent position where you wish in academia. So in this sense, this mobility, I think this this is kind of this awareness that I mentioned for peers and this, you should be aware that, I mean, this kind of mobility can be forced for you. And I mean, until now in Poland, usually you could stay in the town where you wish, but it can happen, it can change, right? If we follow the, if the competition will increase and it start to increase. So for example, now it start to be quite hard to get permanent position at the University of Warsaw. And if you don't accept other places in Warsaw, then the best solution would be to go to other town in Poland, what usually don't, people don't want. But or probably it's the same in the other direction. So it's not 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 related to the town. But but I think this is something that probably if if Polish Polish economy and academia will develop well, then this kind of force mobility will also be here as a part of, of, of being in academia and you should have it in mind. Okay, so uh, we talk about the internships, we talk about the life work balance, and we mentioned a few times the topic of shifting, of changing the, the paths from uh, industry to, uh, from an academia to industry, or maybe the, uh, the other side. Um, so first of all, what do you think? Uh, Maybe I, everybody, I guess that it's obvious, but let's talk about it. It's it's more possible to shift from academia to industry on to the other side. Mr. Adna, maybe. Oh. Well, oh, uh, I, it, I think 
difficult uh, to, for, for me to say because I, I only did the switch, uh, you know, in one direction. <laughs> so I don't have experience with switching the other way. Uh, but how but about this experience with switching in the uh, in the in the let's say right way? <laughs> Uh, okay, so so the experience of switching from uh, from academia to industry, uh, it obviously uh, it depends on the job that you're switching to, uh, uh, but I think it's usually um, it, it requires quite a lot of uh, learning, getting getting uh, adjusted to the new job and learning simply new ways of uh, of how it all works um, but it's uh, for me it was simply very interesting uh, I must say I maybe I was lucky um, with where I ended up uh, but uh, it was a very exciting and inter interesting experience uh, and I'm I'm definitely happy with it uh, but I would I guess it it really depends on on uh, where you end up with and what kind of job you're uh, you're taking, and with going the other other way around. I know people who uh, like uh, when they finish their job in industry, like uh, they for their retirement they wanted to go back to to academia as a hobby basically, um, and they did it, but. Uh, uh, I don't think it was a really a transition to hardcore research. It was more like for their own interest and pleasure. But uh, uh, but I might I mean that that's just the few cases that I know of. I I don't know many cases of people switching back. Mr. Michal, what do you think about it? Yes. Yeah, so I mean, I've, of course, I don't have uh, experience with switching between academia and business, but I would say that it's harder to go back to academia. I think that, of course, there are people ha coming back as really experts, successful experts, and most probably they can be more in the economic or applied things, right? But but uh, but but the other way it can be and we can be. Yeah, but I I think that here as a part of our awareness lesson for future PhD students or current PhD students is. That somehow, my, from my perspective, what is one of the biggest differences in kind of how you are uh, perceived in academia and in, in business? In business, like what matters really is the set of skills like that you have. It doesn't really matter if you somehow were collecting the sets of skills for 10 years, what kind of really, how many good projects you deliver. I mean, this is part of it, but really the skills and somehow what you can do is important. But in academia, fortunately or rather unfortunately, it's not only what you know, but it's also how many papers you publish, how many PhDs you pro you promoted, and so on. So somehow you might yeah, like your, your gravity like is counted by how many things you did also maybe ten years ago. What for business will be, I mean, they really care how much you learn from this, not really how many how many projects you deliver and how much money the other company did. I mean, this is good indicator that you can be useful for them, but it's not something that really matters. This is at least my observation. Academia, I mean, really the papers since the I mean. In, in general, like they tell that like the, the real academic life clock starts clicking from the PhD defense. And from the PhD defense, they will count how much is your output divided by your age from the PhD defense, right? And this is something that, uh, that makes it a problem going back to, to, to academia after business. Because if you had like 10 years break, of course, you can use it in some kind of your CV. You can, when you apply for professor position, yeah, yeah, I, I, I have like the scientific output as my 10 years younger colleague, but I spent 15 years in business. So you can use this argument, but it can be harder to, to cross the barrier. So yeah, so this is like this, my 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 kind of observation and, and, and what I think about this. Mr. Martin, what do you think about this, uh, this kind of experience? So I have I, I don't know anyone who would switch from industry back to academia. Uh, however, there's there's one important difference between uh, building your uh, experience in academia and in, in industry. As uh, Michal mentioned, uh, in academia, what really matters is the publications, and while in industry, it's the projects that you completed. And when you when you're on a project in industry, you the moment you complete a project. You can put it on your CV and say, I'm, I, I completed this project. 
I'm looking for an next opportunity. And that takes 15 minutes to put it on your CV and it's there, it's, you know, it's valid. In academia, you, you spend months working on, on the paper and you can benefit from this work a year, two, three years later, depending on where you're publishing. It takes a long, long time uh, to get publication out. I remember when I left academia, you know, we, we continued working in papers and I, I was getting email notification from publishers that my, you know, my, the paper where, where I co-authored was, was published year, two, three years into my uh, industry uh, work. Even though I was not working in academia, I was still getting, gaining the so-called academia experience. So uh, that's, that's a problematic thing. And that's why when, uh, what Michal said, when you, when you have your PhD, you start with clock zero, it's important if you are thinking about the career in academia, it's important to start this clock with you know time zero, but not zero publications. So uh, publish work. This, this, this is how your work is being um, you know, measured in, in academia. Start early, don't wait with that. Uh, so the other thing that is, uh, is probably important to mention for people who never try to find a job, so they are still studying, they, you know, they are happy with the, what they are doing. Uh, be aware that finding, even with a PhD in physics, you, I will say you can find a job. There's no, there is no problem with you finding a job. But, you know, if, if, you, if you really are looking for a specific type of job in a specific industry doing specific things, be prepared that you know finding a job takes takes time and takes effort so it's not like you send the cv someone look at the cv calls you and okay you, you we are, please come on for an interview and on the interview with they will tell you okay you're high that's you know, you know it, in tv uh, it looks like that in reality uh the hiring process especially with large companies it's it's several steps or five steps when you meet with different people uh, assignments that you might get, business cases, tech cases, you know, bring it, bring it home, complete it, uh, and send it back. Uh, sometime online tests, you meet with a technical person on there, you know, Google loves that. You meet with a technical person, you have 40 minutes, three questions, and, uh, you know, blank sheet of blank Google Doc to, to write your answers in. And, and basically, if you run out of time, you run, you did run out of time. Sorry, <laughs> that, that was, those were simple questions. You didn't make it. Uh, so be prepared that it will require some effort and some time to find a decent work. So it, it's also a thing that is you know, reasonable to start before you complete your, uh, before it defends your master's or, or your PhD. Start looking for a job ahead if you're not thinking about staying in academia. Mr. Jakub? I think this question about uh, the reverse direction from business, yes, to science, uh, it's interesting and maybe more relevant than may, we may think because I personally know some people uh, who were in science, for example, finished a PhD and they thought, okay, now I'm going into business, now I will be a promager, but maybe in a few years I will come back. But for such people, I wanted to stay, no, <laughs> you won't come back. You don't count on it. I actually, I know personally some cases of the reverse direction from business and science, but there are very particular cases. There are cases where, in which when you were in business, you get to know some particular skills that when then useful in science. This is the case. For example, you are programming the, pres the precise thing that we require for some scientific projects. Yes, you are an engineer which will, will, will make making components which were needed in the university. For example, if you are a programmer that now, but you love, I don't know, many body quantum mechanics and you want to come back to many body quantum mechanics, no chance on that. Yes, if you know that your skill is useful, then yes, but in general, no. And uh, I would like to remind to all the participants that you can always ask your questions on the on the live chat uh, because we are still waiting for 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 them. And uh, coming back to our main topic, Mr. Darius, I think. Yeah. So uh, so well, I have to say that it is very rare to um, 
someone from industry to, to go back to academia. I, I do know a couple couple people, but I would say it is difficult in most cases. However, it is possible to be in the industry, uh, work in R&D for some company, and it is possible still to write some papers. It is possible to uh, have some patents. Uh, patents are also valuable and they might well help in uh, maybe moving back you know to to academia in in the future and if if you're head of r and d or maybe your c t o and uh want to go back to academia and set up your own group or something well maybe it is it is possible uh uh but uh, in, in for most cases i believe it is very difficult if you're just uh, in, in industry, want to go back. Uh, that's first thing. And second thing uh, is that, well, if you already have some patents, et cetera, you, I mean, uh, I, I, I can't think uh, of a reason why you would like to move back to academia. Like most, most people, uh, they, they, if they start uh, and they are successful in industry, they just want to stay in industry. I see. But I ask this question uh, because I heard from my colleagues about this kind of idea that let's do not uh, do not be uh, okay. Okay, let's be let's be specific, but let's do not close any of this uh, of this path. So let's be a half time scientist and half time worker. What do you think about it? Maybe it's possible at the Fluence Technology. Well, half-time uh, uh, scientist, half-time um, well <sighs> worker. So, like like I said, you can if you go to industry or you can if you come to to us, uh, you can still working on a very interesting subjects. And if you started in as the, in the subject of uh, laser engineering and you did your PhD in uh, building lasers in uh, then, then you come to us you work in R&D building lasers writing some patents then I think yeah, it is still possible to go back to academia after uh, well a year or two um, but maybe don't you shouldn't wait too long because what what my colleagues said it, it matters if you have papers if you have publications uh, well it is possible to publish when, when you work for industry but maybe it is uh, it depends on the company how the company will see it if it's something beneficial for them or not i see and so it's possible to publish but how about uh, mr Michal? would you like to have some PhD or maybe postdocs that that you know that they are also working in some company. Yes, so I think that because exactly what you defined exactly like this half scientist half industry. This is the research and development department in in companies, right? In industry, because this, this is the definition. So I would say that depending what is your goal, because I think if you just enjoy doing research and you, you find the both scientific like institution and company that's okay with this, I mean, you can continue. I would say that if you think about like being becoming professor, let's say somehow having PhD students and so on, so being kind of this kind of leadership position in reset, then I think it will be very hard working half of the position because you will have half of the, let's say scientific accomplishments that are important to get research grants or things. I mean, that, that also can be much easier, for example, at technical universities in really applied applied research because i think it will be for sure much easier uh, if you i mean some material for example if you are developing some materials and working the company that producing this i mean this is the overlap i think much better but i'm at fundamental physics uh, part of the of the of the research so 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 from my perspective probably i would prefer i, I prefer i think for PhD, i prefer PhD to be focused on doing research especially i think that phd kind of job is this full-time job right this is our assumption that it's like 40 hours per week i mean we, we i mean i expect 40 good hours but if you ask professors at harvard they will tell their PhD and they expect 70 hours and they will not joke although we have this first april today right so of course i mean i, I think that it can be just much harder to combine but I, especially in applied research at technical universities this can be easier but i don't have too much either experience or observations uh, on this. So 
But I see that Miss Anna has some observations. Yes, so exactly on this subject, um, due to the nature of uh, my company here, uh, we have, so most of the people working here are engineers, uh, and uh, this is exactly what I see. That So as I mentioned, we have also many people who started as interns, and they then switched to this kind of part-time uh, job uh, because they wanted to combine it with their studies. And for them, it works very well. Uh, so they are still, for example, students at the Warsaw University of Technology, uh, and they do their research. Uh, and it's actually very beneficial for them to see how um, professional industrial um, design development of electronics and how manufacturing works and so on. So they actually use this also in their, um, their research. Uh, and we benefit at the same time from the experience that they gain uh, at the university. Uh, so, so for uh, I think in this field, it's a win-win and it's also uh, a quite easy marriage looking at uh, the amount of people who are doing that. I see. And I see also one question uh, on the chat. I see that we need to come back uh, for a while to the um, kind of previous topic. topic. Uh, Agnieszka is asking, uh, so do you warn? Uh, so do you warn us that it is a one-way ticket, and she means a ticket from university to business, and and usually you do not come back. Let's let's recall it once again. In general, yes, we do. <laughs> In general, Anna, uh, Martin, yes. <laughs> and Jakub, what In do you general, think? In general, yes. It's a big warning yeah, for everybody, and I think that. Yes. Mr. Darius was was. I, I would say this is like uh -huh. one one way street. When of course you can go against the direction, you can probably survive, but but it's not what typically happen and what's not what is not safe. So, yeah, I, I, I want to say that well, it is it is really up to you. So most people wouldn't go back, but if you want to try, why not? So. Uh, um, I think nowadays there is more and more pressure on the universities to have like stronger ties with business. So for example, if you started your career in the industry and then after a year you want to go back, you might use this like uh, uh, opportunity, let's say, and try to strengthen the, 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 the ties between university and business. For example, to to uh, help in some technology transfers, for example, right? So so maybe try and be part time at university, part time a company, but this is your your decision. Uh, your route that uh, not many people take. So there's always opportunity. You just have to try. Yeah, and let's stick to this topic because, like in my notes, I have I have even uh, I had even a question about uh, this kind of uh, building bridges between science and 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 business, like. Um, I know that we mentioned R and D, uh, R and D sections, uh, groups, and so on. But um, what kind of exp uh, experience uh, do you have with, with that, or maybe your colleagues, Mr. Darius? Because I think this is the uh, the main point of view of, of business, not exactly the the, the university. Um, so yeah, so. Uh like i said earlier so we we value having access to skilled skilled students so this is well very important for us at the moment um so we we do want to be in touch with different technical universities we want to have access to uh, graduates who graduate uh, physics because we 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 are a growing company and we still keep the, the we, we need to have the well fresh uh, fresh minds and, and skilled people um, so uh, so this is like the main 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 area of collaboration let's say we have when it comes to education and business um, and uh, when, when it comes to other topics, well, 
it would be nice to have some collaborations that lead to some technology transfers, uh, but this is not always so easy right, right, right now, but yeah. Okay, I see. Any, any comments about that? I don't see. It. Okay, so uh, let's let's switch to another topic. Uh, is it? What do you think? Is it possible to um, to define some kind of characteristic of uh, uh, of, 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 of 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 person who should choose university? Or should, academia, or should choose the the industry. What kind of, I don't know, typical um, um, I mean, like which career is for who? Maybe like that. Some stereotypes. What do you think? Oh, I think it's impossible to do. Uh, that really uh, is a personal preference uh, thing, and. Basically, um, there's a lot of randomness and coincidence involved. Uh, for, for some people, the decision about staying in academia is basically because they met someone inspiring in academia. Um, and otherwise, they wouldn't even consider that. Uh, for, and the same goes for, for the industry. It might be that you, you, you know, you've, you've seen opportunity and you, you grabbed it. Um, so of course, someone may say that if you are if you are interested in you know the thinking through the problem and spending a lot of uh, a lot of time uh, solving the problems, you should you should consider academia, and yeah, you should consider it always. But there are industries, there are, there are jobs out there that also allow you to. Uh, to deal with uh, with hard problems, and uh, for example, this is what we uh, what we do in uh, in the consulting industry. We we, all, we you know we have clients where we are doing repetitive, straightforward work that is boring, uh, but we also have clients and problems where we, we basically need to really think through uh, and uh, and spend a lot of time doing doing research and 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 trying to find a, a new solution uh, for a problem. So. Again, like summarizing, I, I don't think that there's a general answer to, to this question uh, about the profile of people who should stay at academia or should go to the industry. It's a personally, personal based kind of thing. Ms. Anna? So I, I think I could say who should not stay in academia. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it, at least two, two examples. It, if you care only about your income, don't, don't stay in academia. Um, if you uh, if you want to do just a job to you know stay alive, I don't know, pay your bills, uh, and you want to have a eight hour per day a job and then leave it and do something else, also don't stay in academia. Um, but the other way around, I don't know. <laughs> And Mr. Jakub? Yes, um, I would also to stress that the circumstances are crucial here, yes? Uh, there is no such thing as one business, there is no such thing as one academia. In academia, in precisely, you should just judge which uh, research group, yes, you would be in and how the situation is in this research group. And uh, because of it, uh, of course, the physicists are usually people who are interested in creative stuff, yes? So you really can have a job in academia which is not creative at all, and you can have a work in business which is as creative as academia or even more. I see. There are no rules. There are no rules. And how about me, uh, Mr. Michal? Yes, so I, I fully agree with all these, these voices. So, and I would only add to here like, what is the, 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 diff, the most important difference that I can see that like, because I would not exactly, that it's very hard to define what kind of general uh, things you need. But I think one thing that you need, and it's not like personal thing, like, but what is needed to be not successful, but just happy with academic work, I think you would have to be interested in your subject. So whatever you do, 
kind of interest in what you are doing, somehow honest interest, almost on the, I don't, I don't say that you have to be passionate, it doesn't have to be your passion, but this has to be on the border of your hobby, right? So you have to be interested, and it, because the motivation is very important, like the kind of internal motivation is extremely important in academia. So somehow, if you, if you are not interested in what you are doing, it will be very hard to be successful in academia. I think it's probably it's also not easy life in business if you are doing what you don't like, but I can imagine that it's much easier to go just for this eight hours to do what, what, what they have to do, what you have to do to get some decent salary and, and be happy with this. I would say that that kind of this approach in academia will just stop you from being successful at the end. So, so I mean, this is not a personal thing. This is something I would say, I, I tell to my students that it's not bad if you lie yourself that you like the subject. If effectively at the end, you behave and feel as a person that like the subject of your work and you are motivated it's okay so the the source i mean because we sometimes have this kind of super romantic vision of doing in doing research that you are you know somehow really passionate about this i mean it's important to be motivated interested i mean the source of it can be different way but it can be also because you just don't feel at all well in in business and like you don't feel well with with the fact that you're contributing to some owners to make lots of money so this can also be kind of motivation but at the end at the end it must be somehow this kind of interest and motivation in academia that without this it's very hard to survive if i may comment one thing about this very very important thought uh you you never should expect that the work that you will be doing will be 100 percent stuff that you love doing uh, even in academia, even if you are you 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 completely love your field study, you will be a, you will be forced to deal with paperwork. You will be forced to write a um, grant proposal. You will be forced to deal with all of this stuff that you probably don't like. And this th this is the same for for the business side. Uh, try to steer your career in a way that you will do as much of the stuff that you love as possible, but, but never expect that it, it's going to be only that. I, so, I, sorry, if I just can go between. Yeah, exactly. I think this is something that I observe with younger and younger people. I mean, there is nothing perfect in life. And if you really kind of try to find the perfect position, perfect kind of things for you, it, you can be unhappy until the, the death. Because there is always like, you should find the best that you have in access that is possible and, and, and somehow accept the fact that it will be never 100, but it can be 99.9% what you wish, but it will be never 100%. I see also the the question uh, uh, on the chat, uh, which probably uh, is... If, uh -huh. if I can just add one thing, but yeah, I, yeah. because I think it's, uh, it's relevant for people who are thinking now about what they would like to do with their uh, careers. Um, so we were also talking about uh, research and combining research with uh, and doing research in, in academia and doing research as R&D in industry. Uh, and um, this this remark about that uh, uh, not, not you cannot expect that everything you'll do will be uh, always that you 100% enjoy doing and so on. So one thing that is, I think, uh, relevant to remember about uh, uh, doing a job in industry is that at the end, uh, what matters in industry that is that uh, uh, what you do brings profit. And this is something that you cannot somehow close your eyes to. I mean, there are, uh, it's, uh, uh, there is a lot of R&D going on in industry and it's very uh, interesting and it's very ex exciting. But in the end of the day, you have to know that if you decide for R&D in industry, it's with this mindset that, that, that you're aiming at a product that someone will want to buy, that will bring a profit uh, to the company and that will be useful, that it will work in the end. Uh, and this is something that I observed um, many times already with people from uh, from academia who were trying uh, to switch uh, to to an industry job that they somehow didn't appreciate that and then these people did not last uh, because uh, they were like um, they still had this academic approach that they were interested in that so they wanted to do that and they didn't follow uh, let's say the 
tasks that they were given because they thought that something else is more interesting and uh, and they um, uh, they could not focus on on this goal which is there always somehow in the background uh, in industry that that there is this purpose that we are uh, earning for for our own that in the thing that we do uh, will make our own salaries in the end <laughs> so so it has to be uh, in the end uh, useful and uh, uh, marketable and mr dario darius Yes. Uh, so, in, in the subject, I also want want to say that, like all that we said uh, earlier, that you have the opportunity to to choose your life. You don't win life; you earn it, right? So, it is really up to you and how you live it. And just uh, uh, it's not like lottery. So, if you want to have a good life and you you want to make sure you made a good choice. Don't wait and stay passive and don't uh, wait, you know, just to see what, what happens. Uh, just act and try. So, you know, you can go to university first, you can uh, study, but simultaneously you can go to some professors, you can ask them to, to give you some experience in the lab or maybe try some, some to, uh, to get some experience with uh, some doing some simulation, to doing some calculation. And then uh, you can see how it works. Then over the summer, you can go to, to, to some company, do some internship and see how this works for you and you have the entire university to decide um, where you want to end up right whether in science you, you can you can write some papers while being on your master's uh, degree uh, i think this is enough time to to make the decision and uh, and to learn what suits you most thank you thank you for that for, for, for that opinions uh, there is also a question that I mentioned. Uh, I think that we partially ask uh, answer about uh, on it, but uh, let's let me ask and we'll try to sum up uh, this. Agnieszka is asking, so what we should think of about before deciding between the academia or uh, industry apart uh, from money and just to sum up. Um, money, reading, okay, apart from money, so reading papers, creativity, uh, profit, okay, it's also money, somehow, uh, what else, what else? I would say that important thing that to consider when you're considering academia is a passion for tutoring, passion for teaching, because that's always a part of, of um, you know, we're working very, for academia, and expectation from your future career. I, I think and many may disagree, but uh, when in academia, the, the growth through career is more steady, more predictable. You, you know what's, what's at the end. And, yeah, and you know, at the end is a, it's a full professor position somewhere. This is where you're working towards. Uh, or on the industry side, it's, it's, it's more, than, more dynamic. So if, if, you're, if you're looking for some more excitement from, from your career, just consider, consider going to industry because you know, excitement is there. I see that. Yes, mm -hmm. probably depends, depends what you define as excitement. So of course, like in terms of kind of what kind of position you get, but I mean, the advantage of doing research is that in fact, you really I mean, I would say that you have much more control of what you are doing in the sense that what kind, when you don't have control over where you are doing this, because this is the biggest problem I would say of academia, that this, you don't have too much control where you will be the full professor. I mean, you have lots of control over what kind of research you will do. So you are really defining your project. Of course, with business, you can define to what company you go uh, and so on. So you can switch company, but also we know that you should not switch company every two months. Whereas in academia, I mean, Depends, like if you have like 10 PhD students, you can really switch your subject of interest every every two months. Maybe it's not the best way to do that, but somehow this is somehow. The, so there can be lots of dynamic and there is lots of kind of uh, uh, elasticity in this. Uh, but, but of course, I mean, there are. Yeah, so I would be I would I would defend a bit uh, this kind of uh, <laughs> aspect. And how about Mr. Jakub? 
Um, I would like to give some warning that, especially if you want to have a career in physics, you will be forced to spend growth, yes. And of course, many people love it. Actually, it's an advantage for them, but for some it may be very, uh, you know, hard or even impossible, yes. And moreover, uh, if you go to some uh, business and you can choose, for example, usually the industry, the exact enterprise, which fits your loca location, yes. But if you are specialized in some branch of science, there may actually be not that many places on the world, you know, use this branch of science. So you, have, you are somewhat more limited. Sorry, and Mr. Mr. Darius? So uh, I think that uh, well, well, what Michal said is not always uh, accurate, meaning that in science, you can also uh, be passionate about one subject but you know nobody else cares about it so it means that nobody will give you money or funding to do this subject so you also have to do some uh, sexy topics you know you have to do like nowadays uh, if you do something quantum there's, there's a big money uh, and uh, there's very little money for other topics like uh, i don't know I, I, don't, I don't want to say but uh, also one one important thing is that in science, even if you if you're a great scientist in not very popular subject, I think it is easier to shift to other subject which is more popular. And uh, in 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 industry, you have to also remember that you have different different industries. You have different uh, things. It's not like only one industry. Um, if you want to change what you do and change the industry, this is also difficult. To, to change what you're doing, right? If you work in marketing and then you want to go and do work in, in R&D, oh, oh, it's, it's, it is very difficult, right? And also if you work for a shoe, shoe company and then you want to start doing uh, stuff with optics, I mean, it is, it's also a very difficult transition. So uh, just be aware uh, that you have limited time to settle with one industry or be creative of how you can change from one to another. And I have to apologize, but I have to leave now. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the for for your last uh, last uh, last answer. Uh, Miss Anna would like to uh, add something. Uh, sorry, sorry oh. for interruption, but unfortunately, my work is also calling me uh, <laughs> in in few minutes. So I will I will need to I will need to leave. Uh, great course. discussion. Uh, thank you all for for all your all your thoughts. Um, you know, I hope that all of that will be helpful so, for the students uh, when when they are making their decisions. So if I can, so if I can stop you for just 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 two minutes because I see that we are all just uh, we are just kind of tired and we are slowly finishing. But for the last um, last question, last remark, I would like to ask you. Uh, about some uh, some take home message for all of viewers that are watching as a listeners like what you can say just one sentence if we uh, if we would like to sum up this this discussion i would say that definitely in terms of planning your career be proactive uh, plan ahead invest your time while you have it and uh, Mr. Darius, you are still with us, or? Uh, yes, I'm still with you. Yeah. Uh, I would say that, uh, I mean, I agree totally, 100%. Uh, be proactive, this is very important. Invest your time, this is very important. And even if you're academia in academia, don't forget about people. So uh, university is for studying, for getting uh, knowledge and science, but it's also very important to creating networks, meeting people. So actually uh, going out with friends is also important because at some point they might become CEOs, uh, they might become important people and this network of contacts is very important in the future as well. So proactive network of people, Mr. Jakob, what would you like to add to this? Yeah, I would like to add that, of course, the academia is so broad and wide, and business is even more, uh, yes, brighter and wider. So 
So I have a feeling that what we are giving today is actually some sort of general life advice, which I hope is a good life advice. But the more important thing, I think, more, think more important than everything that we will say is that people around you, yes, us, students, uh, your colleagues, uh, when you go to want to go to industry, ask people from this industry. This is the most most crucial part. So, so it's good, good to, to good to listen to others and uh, Mr. Michal. Yes, yeah, so I would suggest to to do what you really like. So try be active, try the thing that you that you like, and and really select. I would say what you like the most, what you feel the best. Not only like what gives you the the best money or 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 somehow, but but this is very important to enjoy your job at the end, right? And Miss Anna. Yes, I agree with uh, all of you and uh, uh, also stress to, to be active. Uh, uh, if you want to find out uh, what, how the job is uh, somewhere else, uh, reach out to, this pe to the people there, ask them questions, uh, um, make new experiences, uh, make internships uh, and decide wisely. I, in particular for people in, in technical um, areas, uh, I believe that, as we already mentioned here, most of you won't have a problem with finding a job if you, if you decide, for example, to switch to industry. Uh, so keep this in mind that, uh, that uh, there is a value to the education that you have. Uh, so don't just uh, um, catch uh, whatever first job uh, Take take uh, this decision wisely and um, choose something that you like, that you think that you'll find your uh, passion there, and uh, and then uh, just uh, just do it. Just do it. Okay, thank you very much for for this uh, this great discussion. Uh, I see that uh, in your uh, like in uh, our background is getting darker and darker, so it's the sign that we should slowly finish. Um, so, dear dear participants, participants, the viewers, thank you for for your questions, for that you were you were with us uh, on on our Sciencon online session. You are welcome to uh, to join us tomorrow. There will be two lectures. Uh, no, it will be one lecture about uh, atmospheric physics. There you can find it on our Sciencon profile. Uh, the transmission is already uh, transmission is already. Uh, is uh, planned and it will be a, a lecture of, of uh, Mr. Gustavo Abade about the atmospheric physics and uh, so that was the one announcement and at the end of, of our lecture uh, lecture panel discussion I would like to say thank you for Miss Anna Kaminska from uh, Cryotech Instruments that uh, you were with us and also from Mr. Michał uh, Tomza from University of Wrocław and Mr. Jakub Ślęzak from Wrocław University of Science Technology and also for those that uh, are, are, are first to um, uh, go later, Mr. Uh, Łukasz Cincio from uh, Los Alamos Laboratories, a laboratory, and Mr. Uh, Darius uh, Świerat from Fluence Technology, and Mr. Marcin Polkowski from End to End Analytics. Thank you very much. Have a great evening, and I hope to see you. Uh, see you soon, and see you tomorrow on our next uh, live uh, live transmissions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay. Uh, okay.